Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Jean Ladding. I'm the founding president of Leading Consciously. We are dedicated to helping you and your organization build more culturally empowered relationships, both in the workplace and in the world. So imagine a guy named Phil who works in a software company and he has to produce solutions allowing customers to drag, track down their reports. Now, Phil is the only person of color in his team of about 10 people. And because he's fairly new in the organization, he goes to people on his team to ask them questions. Meanwhile, team members the majority white team members are thinking Phil doesn't know what he's doing because the questions he's asking, they think are downright stupid. So they are talking among themselves, but they're not talking to Phil. Asking him, I mean, at telling each other that he obviously doesn't have what it takes to function in such a high, uh, an intense high-flying environment as theirs. Meanwhile, they are giving hints to their manager saying Phil doesn't have it. And the manager seemingly is either not catching it or not addressing it with Phil. So one of them comes to me and says, Gene, this is the situation that's going on. Phil is holding us up. He's asking stupid questions. What should we do? So how to address this? First question in my head is, has anybody told Phil? Has anybody tried to find out what kind of support does Phil need? Do they know that they that Phil do they does Phil know that they think he's asking stupid questions? What I know from the research of my own experience is that people are afraid to confront people of color for fear, white people are afraid to confront people of color for fear of being called racist. And so what happens if the people of color fall behind slowly because nobody's telling them where they're messing up or where they need to be improved. And so they fall further and further behind, meanwhile watching their peers rise up in the organization and not knowing why is Jane or John or Susie getting all of the mentoring, whereas I'm struggling by myself. So what I would say, let's say the person who's asking me about this is Susan. And so Susan's my client asking me what to do about Phil because Phil is holding up the works. She, uh, she needs Phil's information. He's not producing it. He's asking stupid questions. So what I would say to Susan is, have you talked to Phil? That's number one. Well, no, I haven't talked to him because uh, it's not my job, it's the manager's job. If the manager is being impeded by Phil's work, then it's the manager's job. If you are being impeded by Phil's work, could you first go to Phil and then ask Phil can the two of you go to the manager to help straighten this out? But give Phil the benefit of the doubt. So usually when I suggest that people are astonished, no, I can't do that. Well, let's talk about what's in your head that leads you to believe that you can't confront a peer. If Phil were Jane, who was white like you and female like you and your age and your generation and all of the above, would you know have the words to talk to Phil? If yes, then go to Phil and say, Phil, I have whatever you would say to uh, Jane, say, Phil, I have concerns I'd like to talk with you about. I want us to wor our work to improve. Are you willing to listen? And is this something that you're open to hearing from me? Always get permission first. I had feedback to give one of my colleagues one time and I botched it because I said, I want to tell you what I experienced. And he jumped all over me and he was right. I had goofed up. 
I shouldn't have approached him that way and just dumped on him. I should have gotten permission, prepared him, and see if he was open to feedback. Then explain to Phil, give him a concrete incident. Don't say your whole career is messed up and you don't belong here. All of the negative stuff you have to say about Phil, none of that. Just take a recent incident, describe the recent incident, and then make the request. Phil, it would have been more helpful to me if this had happened instead of that happening. Are you open to that? Is that something you think you can produce? Always ask, is this something he thinks he can do? If he says yes, you're good to go. If he says no, then the next step is, what can we do to work this out? Because I'm needing something that I'm not getting from you. And I know we both want to be successful. So, and we want our team to be successful. So how can, what, what solution do you have to offer? It's that straightforward. Now, the other option, of course, is to just ask Phil, does he tell him the problem and ask him if he has a solution? That's what a lot of people would advise. I tend not to do that because I think when you go to someone with a hidden agenda, and in this case, I have a hidden solution in my head. When you go to a hidden, have a hidden agenda and go to them with that, they can sense it. I've had people come and tell me stuff, want to tell me stuff. It's hidden stuff to try to uh, make it easy for me. And the whole time I'm watching them and I'm thinking, just tell me what you're thinking. And occasionally I say it to cut people off and say, would you just tell me what you want to tell me? So you have to work out how you want to do this. After you have approached Phil, after they've he's responded, after the two of you have worked out a solution for that slice, that one problem, not every problem that exists under the sun that you have with Phil, just that one thing. After you've worked it out, then ask Phil, Phil, I was nervous about approaching you. Could you tell me how I could have approached you in a way that would have worked better? Or what do you think about how I approached you so I can know how to improve in case I have to come back with you or others again? So doing that, you're leveling the playing field. You're giving, first you're telling Phil what he, where he is not rising up to, to what's needed in the moment. Giving him that feedback, giving him a chance to give tell his story then you're leveling the playing field by saying, Phil, I'm just as open to feedback from you. So how did I do in approaching you? That makes it two way and not one way. Hope this is useful. Let me know. If you like what I had to say, click below. And thanks for listening.